In the waning years of the Civil War, advertisements searching for loved ones began appearing in newspapers around the country. Information wanted on my son, Alan Jones. He left me before the war in Mississippi. He wrote me a letter in 1853, in which letter he said that he was sold to the highest bidder, a gentleman in Charleston, South Carolina. Nancy Jones, his mother, would like to know the whereabouts of the above-named person. Any information may be sent to Reverend J. W. Turner, pastor of AME Church, Ottawa, Kansas. The race is still an issue today. Um, it's prevalent in social media, even uh, jokes or stereotypes and things like that. And uh, now with Donald Trump as president, race has become more of an issue, not just to blacks and whites, but other people like Middle Eastern and things like that with uh, the ban of people being allowed to come into the country and out and all the complications. It's a pretty prevalent problem, I feel, in the times of today. Uh, being an African-American, I sometimes don't feel safe in certain environments or I feel like I have a lesser opportunity with certain things. But then also, at the same time, my name is Amir, so that's a Middle Eastern name. So I feel like if I'm seen on paper, I get that prejudice, but then when I'm seen in person, I get a different prejudice. So, yeah, I feel like it's a, kind of a double effect for me. Per se, it's something that's on my mind heavily all the time, but there's certain focal points or topics or things like that that made me think back on and say, well, people went through a lot. And if you take into account the you know, African American president, when that happened, everybody was very happy, and that was something that I was you know, proud of and stuff like that because that's a new landmark for us because of our past. So certain events I feel really focusing in on me, but it's not something I say I would, it like heavily weighs on my mind constantly. Do you know them? Anyone knowing the whereabouts of my father, Robert Allen, his son, Calvin, two sisters, Sarah, Margaret, and Nancy, last seen in Manchester, Manchester, Virginia, mother died before the war. All of us belong to William and Mac Burton of Chesterfield, Virginia. Information on any of them thankfully received. Reverend Thomas N. Allen, 18 Wheat Street, Ithaca, New York. I never really got around the vaccine one because it's like a touchy subject from what it looks like to them because I remember when I was younger I had a project in my in elementary school about my ancestral background and like they wasn't like comfortable with me playing a certain part because like the part was to like play it sleep. And then they, they felt this type of way. So then I didn't end up I didn't um, end up doing it. And then I asked them, Oh, why didn't you want me to do that? And then they just never told me. And like even from now, when I bring up racial stuff that's happening now, they like, Oh, don't bring that around here. I don't want to hear that. But I I, I do believe I have slave um, um slaves as answer. They probably don't either talk about it, so it's like they probably experienced more to the point they don't want to bring it into my generation and feel like, oh, you should know this. This is like, I always wondered, like, we could at least let inform me what's been going on so I can have some knowledge. And like, it's up to me if what if I not want to like keep it in and, or just share it out like with my kids. Like, so, yeah. Information wanted. Evans Green desires to find the mother, Miss Phyllis Green, whom he left in Virginia some years ago. She belonged to old Squire Cook of Winchester, whose son was an attorney at law. Any information respecting her will be thankfully received. Address this paper. The fact that our, my ancestors were brought here hundreds of years ago is something that's still 
permeates through not just my life, but I believe through the lives of most black people in this country. And, and I use the word black people as opposed to African American, a term that I actually hate, uh, largely because we were never Americans. Um, we were brought here in chains and in bondage, and throughout the years, the country has had opportunities to try to rectify those mistakes, and even to this day, it still permeates. Um, the fear that a lot of us, the fear and anxiety that a lot of black people have in terms of everything from the police to uh, health care, uh, there's a certain lack of trust that we have towards the entire system. Uh, I think overall, to be a little bit hopeful, I think overall it has made us stronger uh, and it's helped us to deal with adversity that other people generally don't have to deal with. I always wonder about when we're going to stop being afraid to have these conversations about race. We're always told you know, remember 9-11, which we should. It changed the world. Remember the Holocaust, which we should. It's a horrible example of genocide and murder sanctioned by a state on a mass scale. But when we talk about slavery in this country and the African Holocaust, we're told to get over it. Forget that. That happened a long time ago. And I think that those people who say that are a failure to the human race. The same way that if I ever hear somebody say, oh, the Holocaust, that happened a long time ago. You're a failure to the human race. You've forgotten the lessons of the Holocaust of World War II. And you're, in, you're endangering us now through your forgetfulness to potentially repeat that. Forget 9-11. Are we ever? No, I don't think we are. Therefore, should we ever forget this? Should we continuously sweep it under the rug again and again? Forget slavery, it happened. No, 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 no. When you forget slavery, then guess what? You endanger yourself to potentially be the victim of slavery yourself. Guess what? You got the rest of human history to make up for it and to rebuild a new world. You can take my body, you can take my bones, you can take my blood, but